my first guest, she joined the cast of Saturday Night Live for the second half of the 39th season, becoming the first female African-American player since Maya Rudolph left in 2007. Maybe you heard a little bit about that when the news broke back in January, but she's been a fixture here at the UCB for many years, and before that, before that all happened. I'm delighted she can join me here tonight. First Running Late Show on this stage. Please welcome Sashir Zameda. Yeah! <laughs> That's right. This is your show now. Yeah. <laughs> but I had you. I had you on the Woodstock Comedy Festival mm -hmm. last September. Brought you to Woodstock, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fun show. Spent the weekend fun. in a house. Yeah, we all spent. We all were in a house together. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it was it really fun. With the band, yeah. yeah. The band, me and you in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were good, right? We were good. No, I loved it. It was because we like. I mean, we were like in Woodstock. It was That's right. Beautiful, and so it was like nature everywhere. It was amazing. Um, I, I like I didn't post it, but I remember like filming this weird looking caterpillar in a pool. Do you remember yes, this? Yes. It was like a it was like this fuzzy like red and black caterpillar that was just, like crawling. I was like, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's how long I've been in the city. I'm like, oh cool. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag invasive species. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the drummer Chase watched you while you slept, but uh, that'd be, uh, beyond that, no issues. No issues. A lot's changed though since that September show. This is true. It's been a crazy six months for you this year. Yeah. Tell us about it. What's going on? Do you think? I mean, I haven't talked to you about it. Really. I don't think you've been getting a lot of interviews about it, right? You're kind of keeping this. Oh, I'm not allowed to know, even talk. To. I mean, I mean, I can talk to you about it, but like, uh, yeah. And like, right. I'm not a real person, so you're you Yeah, you're a real person. Right. So yeah. it's fine. Right. But can you take us back to that first day at 30 Rock, showing up? I mean, I mean, things happened so quickly, first of all, getting hired, and then yeah. the show was that week, right? Yes, everything happened very fast. I actually thought I was moving to L.A. Like, I was packing up all my stuff. That's right. And, like, they were in my apartment. I had another apartment in L.A., and then uh, the audition process happened in December, and then I got hired in January, and I started, like, the second week, and, and, and then I was in it. You were um, in it? Yeah. And Drake... And first Drake. show. Yeah, that was the first show. There you there, you Drake, our first, yeah. our first session. Oh, the family. And then, was that like mind blowing? Just to be like, oh, here I'm, I'm like hanging out with Drake now. I couldn't even think about that because everything else was mind blowing. Like, I mean, he was cool, but like the whole the whole experience was like <laughs> right. nuts. Um, it was just another normal part of the. Oh yeah, Drake's gonna be uh, <laughs> hanging out in the dressing room with me. I really tried to like like zone out everything and just like be in that building. Like I quit Facebook the day of my first show. Yeah, I, I noticed. Like, I <laughs> you didn't wish me a happy birthday. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like turned my phone off for like two days. I was like, I can I gotta cut myself off and like just be focused on the job, which helped a lot because because all I could think about was like what was happening in front of me right. but it was really great and like my mom and my brother came to the show and that was super fun and they're from indiana so i like, flew them out and it was like a really wonderful experience to have them there but like af afterwards we go to this after party which is just like going to a restaurant and you sit with your family or, or your crew of people that came with you and and drink and eat and we did that and then i was about to put them in the cab to like take them back to the hotel but before I did it, I was like, I should like introduce my mom to my boss, Lauren Michaels, the guy who hired me. Right. Which I didn't know was a thing you shouldn't do. Uh, <laughs> but I like like pushed through his like posse of people that were guarding him. And I was like, Lauren, this is my mom. Mom, this is Lauren. And they're like shaking hands and Lauren's like, Oh, she's such a great addition to the show. It's great to have her on the team. And my mom's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> very cocky <laughs> and then they're talking and they're like about to wrap it up but my mom's like oh before I go I want to give you this letter that I wrote and pulls a random letter out of nowhere <laughs> and hands it to him and I was like no what? <laughs> like she didn't like tell me she wrote a letter she didn't like even bring up the idea of meeting him she waited till I said do you want to meet him and they like had it just in case <laughs> and she gave him this letter I was like let's just back away from the table now and I turn around and my brother who's 21 at this point uh, like is talking to Colin Juris one of the head writers and he's like oh this episode was actually really good it seems like the show's getting better <laughs> <laughs> and everyone stopped talking to people 
see if you could sketch pack it down oh, to the God. table. <laughs> And I asked my mom, I was like, the next day, I was like, what did you write in that letter? Why did you, what did you give to my boss? And she was like, oh, I don't know. I have a draft of it, though. I was like, dug in her purse <laughs> for a draft of this mystery letter. And I read it, and it was like, it was mostly nice, but it was a lot of like, um, congratulations to you for being so smart to hire my daughter. <laughs> and then she was like, um, I've been praying for something like this to happen. I've been praying for my daughter's dream to come true since she's moved to New York. She's always wanted this. And I've yeah. also been praying for your health. <laughs> well, you're 70 years old. Yeah, she's 70 years old. But you don't say that to somebody that old. And I was like, why did you say that? And she was like, well, he should be lucky that someone's praying for his health. <laughs> That's a, that's a nice Midwestern thing to do. <laughs> I guess. I mean, is, yeah. is your mother a religious woman? Does she? She is. Yes, yeah. she goes to church all the time. So she, I, she does think about. Like she wants me to call her before I get on a plane to travel anywhere, yeah. so that she can pray for me that I'll land safely. <laughs> but I forget. <laughs> Maybe I should though, because I've had like a few delays yeah. and like, like messes up, like some stuff that was. You've crashed every time. <laughs> <laughs> every flight, you miraculously survived every flight. Like, yeah, I've had a lot of crashes. Yeah. I need to pray for me more. <laughs>